cochlear now. The cochlear now in cell, the cochlear nuclei. And cochlear nuclei are two in number, ventral cochlear nucleus and dorsal cochlear nucleus. According to their position in relation with the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Suppose this is the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Inferior cerebellar peduncle. The nucleus lying ventral to it is the ventral cochlear nucleus and this is the dorsal cochlear nucleus. The cochlear nuclei they receive fibers from the cochlear nerve. This is cochlear nerve. The cochlear uh, nerve ends in cochlear nucleus, ventral cochlear nucleus and this also goes to dorsal cochlear nucleus. Now the fibers which emerge from the ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei they are known as a caustic stria. A caustic stria. A caustic stria. They are in the form of three bundles. The ventral acoustic stria, ventral acoustic stria, intermediate acoustic stria. and dorsal acoustic stria. The ventral and intermediate, they start from the ventral cochlear nucleus. Suppose this is the ventral acoustic stria. The intermediate acoustic uh, stria, this goes behind the inferior cerebellar peduncle and then it accompanies the ventral acoustic stria and the dorsal acoustic stria starts from dorsal cochlear nucleus. These are the three acoustic stria. The ventral, intermediate and dorsal acoustic stria. The ventral and intermediate acoustic stria, they start from ventral cochlear nucleus and the dorsal starts from the dorsal cochlear nucleus and then they form a bundle. This bundle is known as trapezoid body. Trapezoid body. Trapezoid body contains collection of grey matter also which is known as a nucleus of trapezoid body. Some of the fibers they terminate the nucleus of a trapezoid body and then fresh fibers start from the nucleus, others they run as such. And these fibers, the trapezoid body, this is median plane. They cross to the opposite side. They remain. Some of the fibers, they may remain on the same side. Some of the fibers, they cross to the opposite side. And forms a bundle which is known as a lateral lemniscus. This bundle. The bundle of fibers known as lateral lemniscus. Because the lateral lemniscus uh, contain fibers of both sides. This bundle is lateral lemniscus. Lateral lemniscus. Now, the fibers which start from the ventral cochlear nucleus, they they terminate in superior olivary nuclear complex. Some of the fibers start from the ventral cochlear nucleus 
metabilitin superior polyvalinuclear complex, usually of the opposite side. Superior olivarinucleus superior olivarinucleus they are present at quanto uh, medullary junction and they are arranged in the form of medial superior olivarinucleus Lateral superior olivary nucleus and retro retro olivary nucleus. The fibers which start from the uh, ventral cochlear nucleus they terminate in the, uh, uh, the superior olivary nuclear complex. And from this, fresh fibers start, which uh, uh, cross to the opposite side, or these fibers may remain on the same side, and uh, they uh, form the, they help in formation of the uh, lateral luminous cusp. The lateral luminous cusp ascends, this is lateral luminous cusp. This ascends and finally it goes up to the inferior colliculus present in the midbrain and from there it goes to the higher In this way, the cochlear nucleus, which is related to hearing, have got the cochlear nuclei, ventral and dorsal cochlear, the cochlear nuclei. They form the uh, ecostatic stria, then the trapezoid body. In the trape trapezoid body, uh, there are some collection of gray matter which are known as nucleus of trapezoid body. From the fibers of ventral cochlear nucleus, they go to the superior olivary nuclei, mainly to the median superior olivary nucleus, and these fibers they help in localization of the sun. And then the trapezoid uh, fibers from the nucleus of the trapezoid body or trapezoid body itself, this uh, crosses to the opposite side. Some of the fibers remain on the same side. They ascend up as a lateral lemniscus. This is lateral lemniscus and this contains fibers of both cells. Now, in this way, we have seen the gray matter. The gray matter uh, at the level of the facial follicular, various gradient down nuclei are there. Then the superior oligary nuclear complex. And then the third set of gray matter is the, uh, the nuclei of a reticular formation. The white matter. White matter. White matter contains uh, a bundle of fibers which are on both sides of the median plane. This is medial longitudinal fasciculus. Then there is the tectospinal tract. Tectospinal tract. This is rubrospinal tract. Rubrospinal tract. Then we get the medial. This part is the medial lemniscus. This is medial lemniscus. And then the lateral lemniscus. This is lateral lemniscus. These are important bundles of fibers. Besides this, we also get the inferior cerebellar pedometer and anterior spino cerebellar tract. <coughs> now, coming to
to the section of the pons at its upper part. Section at the upper part of the pons. Transfer section. The basilar part, this part is the basilar part, the structure of basilar part, you know, it is similar at all levels. The structure of basilar part is same at all levels containing the nucleic pontis as gray matter bundles and the fibers, vertically running fibers are corticonuclear, corticospinal and corticopontine fibers and transversely running uh, fibers are the ponti cerebellar tract. These are the fibers of ponti cerebellar tract. And ponti cerebellar tract forms mainly the um, bulk of middle cerebellar peduncle. Therefore, this is a the middle, this is middle cerebellar peduncle. Now, when we take section at a higher level, we get the nuclei related to fifth cranial nerve. Fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve. Dorsally, this will have the cavity, the fourth ventricle, on either side, the superior cerebellar ventricle. This is superior cerebellar peduncle. Superior superior cerebellar peduncle. Superior cerebellar peduncle. These are bundle of fibers which uh, uh, connect midbrain and cerebellum. And the medial margins of superior cerebellar peduncles are connected by a sheet of white matter known as superior medullary vena. This is superior superior medullary vena. Superior medullary vena. And this is the cavity the fourth ventricle. This is fourth ventricle. Now at this level we mainly get the motor nucleus of fifth cranial nerve and chief sensory nucleus related to the fifth cranial nerve. Motor nucleus lies medially. So this is the motor nucleus. Motor nucleus of fifth cranial nerve. This is present from both sides and almost at the same level we will get the chief sensory nucleus. One of the sensory nuclei related to fifth cranial nerve. Now the fibers emerge from this. These are the fibers emerging on the surface as fifth cranial nerve and uh, the motor fibers, these are the motor fibers, motor fibers like medial to the sensory fibers. 
Besides the fifth cranial nerve nucleus, we will also get the medial longitudinal fasciculus, as we have seen in the lower part, the tecto spinal tract, the rubro spinal tract, then you will get the medial lemniscus. This is medial lemniscus. Later to it, it will get the spinal lemniscus. This is spinal lemniscus. More laterally, there will be trigeminal lemniscus. Trigeminal lemniscus. And more laterally, we will get the lateral lemniscus. These are bundles of fibers. Lemniscus are tracks, long tracks. Long tracks known as uh, the lemniscus. The lemniscus system comprises of four pairs of lemniscus. They are medial lemniscus. Spinal lemniscus, trigeminal lemniscus, and lateral lemniscus. And the rest of the area uh, is occupied by the reticular formation. Now, let us try to understand the fifth cranial nerve. We are seeing only two nuclei related to fifth cranial nerve. Let us try to understand. What are the other nuclei of the nerve? Trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal. This is midbrain. This is pons. The medulla. And then this is continuous with the spinal cord. The midline. This is the midline. Now, the fifth cranial nerve has sensory nuclei and motor nucleus. Motor nucleus. This is present at the middle of the pons. Middle of the pons. On either side of the medium brain. The motor nucleus uh, comprises of the fibers or it just gives out the fibers which supplies the um, uh, muscles developing from the first branchial arch. Therefore, the functional component of this will be special visceral effect. Special visceral effect. Then comes the sensory nuclei. Sensory nuclei. They are present as spinal nucleus. Spinal nucleus, chief sensory nucleus, and mesencephalic nucleus. Mesencephalic nucleus. The sensory nuclei are spinal nucleus, chief sensory nucleus, and mesencephalic nucleus. The spinal nucleus, this extends from the middle of the pons down to the medulla up to the first cervical spinal segment. This is elongated mass of grey matter. 
It starts from the first cervical spinal segment, present in whole of the medulla, and then in the lower part of the pons. This is spinal nucleus, and this receives pain and temperature sensation. Pain and temperature from the anterior half of the skull and the face. Pain temperature. Spinal nucleus for pain and temperature. The chief sensory nucleus is located by the side of the motor nucleus in the middle of the pons. And this receives touch sensation through as well as fine. Touch sensation. And then the mesencephalic nucleus, this extends above from the upper part of the pond, it goes up to the midbrain. It is present in the whole of the midbrain and upper part of the pond. This is mesencephalic nucleus, this is chief sensory nucleus, this is spinal nucleus, and this is the motor nucleus. Spinal nucleus receives pain and temperature sensation, chief sensory nucleus, touch sensation, and mesenchymatic nucleus, proprioception from temporomandibular joint and muscles of mastication. Now, the fifth cranial nerve is attached somewhere over here. Fifth cranial nerve. Fifth, fifth cranial nerve is mixed now having uh, the two components, the sensory as well as motion. The fibers, these fibers are the central processes of the cells present in the trigeminal ganglion attached on the surface of the Pons, and as they enter inside the pons, they divide into ascending and descending fibers. The descending fibers, they end in spinal nucleus. And these descending fibers form the spinal tract. Spinal tract we have seen in many places in the medulla and also in the pons. The descending fibers, these are the descending fibers, they, uh, they are carrying pain and temperature sensation and they terminate in spinal nucleus and these, this bundle of fiber is known as a spinal tract. And pain and temperature sensation is coming from all the three uh, divisions of the trigeminal nerve, the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular. The ophthalmic fibers, the ophthalmic fibers, they remain most ventrally in the spinal tract and they go up to the lower limit of the spinal nucleus. They descend down up to the lower limit, limit of the uh, spinal nucleus. The maxillary fibers, they are intermediate in position in the spinal tract and they descend up to the lower limit of the medulla oblongata. And most dorsally situated are the fibers of mandibular nerve and they descend up to the middle of the medulla. In this way, they are forming the spinal Tract. So this is spinal nucleus and this is the spinal tract, the descending fibers. The spinal tract and spinal nucleus, they are also related to 7th cranial nerve, 9th cranial nerve and 10th cranial nerve. The 7th, they also terminate into it. This is 7th, seven, 7th. Seven, Nine and ten. Tenth cranial now. Seventh cranial now, ninth cranial now, and tenth cranial now. The ascending fibers.
fibers, they terminate in chief sensory nucleus, chief sensory nucleus, and they go further up and they terminate in the mesenchymatic nucleus. These are the ascending fibers. The fibers which terminate in chief sensory nucleus, they are uh, carrying the touch sensation and the fibers which are going to the mesenchymatic nucleus, the proprioceptive sensation. Now, fresh fibers start from this. Cross to the opposite side. These fibers, they cross to the opposite side and they form a track. This is known as a trigeminal lemniscus. We have seen the position of trigeminal lemniscus present in this form. This is trigeminal lemniscus. The fibers start from the spinal nucleus and chief sensory nucleus. The pathway is very clear, but uh, the uh, pathway from the mesenchymatic nucleus is uh, a bit uh, controversial and this may uh, pass through the reticular formation present in the brain stem to the trigeminal lemniscus. In this way we can see that the spinal nucleus is a very long nucleus which uh, extends from the middle of the pons through hold of the medulla up to the first cervical spinal segment. The chief sensory nucleus is present in the middle of the pons and mesenchymatic nucleus this uh, extends up from the middle of the pons and is present in hold of the brain. This is the spinal nucleus and the spinal tract. The sensory nucleus, this is carrying pain, temperature, touch, proprioceptive sensation. Therefore, the functional component of this will be general somatic aspect. Therefore, the fifth Cranial now has two functional components, special visceral efferent, which is ventrogenic efferent, supplying the muscles developing from the first ventral arch, and sensory nuclei, general somatic effort. This is the uh, section at the upper part of the pons having chiefly the nuclei related to fifth cranial nerve. This part is the attachment of fifth cranial nerve and the part lying lateral to it is known as the middle cerebellar pedant. Now coming to the arterial supply of the forms. The paramedial area Paramedial area is supplied by paramedial area. This is supplied by pontine branches of basilar axis. Pontine branches of on the lateral lateral area this is supplied by short circumferential branches of short circumferential branches of basilar artery and long circumferential branches. Long circumferential branches of superior cerebral artery. 
superior cerebellar artery and anterior inferior cerebellar 